there's always something new that you guys are bringing for the for the upcoming guests. What's new this year? Well, that's amazing that you say that because that is what Grand Hotel is known for: is something new every year, something different every year. Hi, this is Ted Kelly with another Ted's Hospitality Minute. Hey, today we've got an awesome guest on. He is David Jersak. He is the president of the famous, famous Grand Hotel on Mackinac Island. He's going to come on and talk a little bit about the hotel and all of the wonderful things that are coming up there and enlighten our viewers for some of us that may not have spent enough time on the island to find out why it's a must visit location. Hey, David, how are you? I'm great. How are you? Man, I am doing well, man. You are great. sitting in probably one of the most unique places in the world. You are recognized all over the world. Every time I pick up a magazine, you know, the Grand Hotel is one of the top places to visit around the country. So yes. you are in a special place, sir. <laughs> I am. And, and I, I feel blessed every day. You know, today... <laughs> You know, a little bit of rain this morning, but it's, you know, it's clearing up because it's a beautiful day every day on Mackinac Island during the season. We opened up for our 138th season um, just this past Friday. So imagine, you know, aside from Mackinac Island being unique and Grand Hotel being very unique, you know, this hotel has opened 138 times. So get, there aren't a lot of hotels that can say that. Yeah. My. We've also closed 137 times. So. <laughs> That's right. That's right. So awesome. Hey, before we talk about the Grand Hotel and all of its splendor, tell our viewers a little bit about you. Where are you originally from? How did you how did you end up at the Grand? Have you always wanted to be hospitality? Talk talk a little bit about that and how those dynamics came together. Well, a lot of dynamics and, and a lot of great, um, you know, stepped in the right direction a lot of times. So I graduated high school. I uh, went to Kansas City uh, to play football at a small college, William Joel College. Graduated from there, took a summer job being a front desk agent at the Western Crown Center, um, and that was about 36 years ago. Um, fell in love with it, thought the business was great, loved doing it, um, and have been in it ever since. I, I moved from Weston to Omni Hotels and Resorts, so spent about 24 years with them moving all over the country, working in all different types of hotels. And the one great thing I did is, is I moved into resorts. Um, and I had the opportunity to work out West in Colorado at a resort. And then I moved to the homestead in um, Hot Springs, Virginia, America's first resort, and then fell in love with historic resorts and, and said that this is it. Um, I, I, I got to find, if I leave here, I got to find another one. And after several other moves, I found another one and, and I think this is the place I just think this is it. I, I don't, and I'm not risking it again and leaving a historic hotel and trying to find another one. I think this is, you know, aside from, I mean, Grand Hotel is, is special and I'm, we'll talk more about that. But Mackinac Island is, if you haven't visited Mackinac Island, you need to visit Mackinac Island. It is something special. Wow. You know what? And you are very unique in, in how you arrived at your place in hospitality because just about every guest that I've spoken with, somehow they took unique turns in their career and ended up in hospitality and decided that they loved it. You sound like you got an opportunity to do hospitality very early and it absolutely took over your life. It does. I mean, it changes everything. I mean, I get to go to, I get to, go to work every day. My, my father worked for Japan Airlines for 30 years. And so he was in the travel industry. And he, he understood travel and he was a salesperson. And, you know, I was originally going to go to grad school. I wanted to go to work with the State Department and do a bunch of other stuff. I had dreams from when I was like seventh grade. And, and I can tell you, in about six months, all those dreams, dreams changed and said, you know, the direction of meeting somebody new from somewhere other than where I'm from. And again, growing up, I got to travel all over the world with my dad. But so at Mackinac Island this year, we have 32 different countries represented in our 730 team members that are here from 32 different countries around the world. I, I can go to lunch today and travel around the world just by talking to people. And and, and, and then that's that's just our, cut, our team member base. Now you go to our customer base. I met a, a wonderful couple from Greenville, North Carolina yesterday, and I could have talked to them all night. And so that's that's what I am. I'm a storyteller and I, and I love people and, and, I, and I'm much happier 
doing this than I would have been sitting it behind a desk in a State Department or an embassy somewhere in the, in the world. Nothing wrong against that, but I, I, I found my right spot. Well, you definitely you definitely picked a special place to be. Will you, real briefly, I guess, tell our viewers a little bit about the history of the Grand Hotel and how it came to be? So Grand Hotel was built on Mackinac Island in 1887. Um, interesting enough, if you go on our website, you'll see some of the older, older photos of the building. The building itself was built 93 days. 93 days. You can't build anything in 93 days. Wow. <laughs> so, um, and the interesting part about it is um, it, it was built by two railroads and a steamship line. And so back then in the late 1800s, railroads were building hotels at the end of their stops because the railroads were, were taking the new rich. And by what I mean by the new rich is the fathers or the, the patriarchs of these families made millions of dollars and their children were then the new rich. And so the children didn't want to spend time in Chicago in the middle of the summer, or Cleveland or you know Milwaukee or wherever. So they would get on trains and they would go to these opulent destinations. Well, the, the, the hotels, or excuse me, the railroads didn't own hotels at the end of those stops. And what they found is to continue to make money is they would build hotels. Quick way to build a hotel is to build a wood frame hotel because you can build them quick. And the idea is that they wouldn't, you know, the idea is that they wouldn't be around long because they didn't necessarily need it long. They needed to build a hotel that served their customers basically overnight. And so we were built 93 days, it's supposed to be 90. We missed it by a few days. And between, eight, between 1899 and 1901, there were 1,200 hotels that were similar to ours. Today, there's only 11. So Mount Washington in, in New Hampshire, the Del Coronado, us, um, the, you know, we're three of the 11 hotels and there it's, it's a very special company that we keep. Um, I think we're, you know, one of the finest of the 11, but I also think it's worth one of the finest because, you know, we've, we have truly kept the history at heart here at Grand Hotel. Still have a dress code, still have to dress properly attire every night at 630. Gentlemen need to wear a coat and tie. Um, it, it's, it's a special place. My goodness, it sounds like it. So what would you say the Grand Hotel is most known for? Um, history. Uh, you know, so it's a National Historic Landmark on an island that is a National Historic Landmark. Um, Mackinac Island was the nation's second national park behind Yellowstone. It's interesting. No one, no one ever knows that. Um, George, you know, uh, John Jacob Astor um, made his first million, the America's first millionaire, made his mi million dollars on Mackinac Island as a fur trader. Um, and then it became about hotels and then it came about hospitality. Interesting enough, we celebrated last year um, on Mackinac Island. It is the 125th anniversary of the banning of automobiles. There are no automobiles on Mackinac Island. So you still travel to the hotel on a horse and carriage. Um, it is... In you, you come across on a ferry, it's about an 18 minute ferry ride, you get to the island and basically you blanket yourself in Americana and history. It's, it's crazy. You're basically going back in time. It is, and there was a movie, Somewhere in Time, filmed at our <laughs> hotel, so there you go. We're going, you're going back in time to the horse and buggy days. Now they yes. do, I think they do let you have bicycles, right? Bicycles, or, that's it, so you can walk, bike or horse and carriage which is really cool because at least the bikes let you kind of explore the island kind of on your own at your own pace right? i spoke to a, i spoke to a gentleman uh last year on an interview similar to this and he was standing you know sitting kind of like where you were but he was in chicago and behind him was this big window and he says tell me about the difference on mackinac island i said well turn around and look at all those cars speeding by on mackinac island everything is slow so you know, you got to walk place to place. So when you walk five or six or eight or 10 or eight blocks or a couple miles a day, you meet more people. You get to say hello to people. You get to, you get to slow down and see people and meet people. And you know, even on a bike, you can't go too fast because you're dodging in and out of horse and carriages. But it's, you know, it's amazing what taking vehicles out of your life, even for a few days, what it does. To not hear a horn beep for three days. 
that's definitely something you got to wrap your mind around because uh, most of the city folks are used to being able to jump on something fairly quick <laughs> and, yeah. and get, get where they got to go. Yep. You're right. <laughs> yeah. So, <laughs> hey, David, let me give a shout out to my sponsor real quick so they'll keep sponsoring us and we can do these episodes, right? Sure. <laughs> hey, TM, THM viewers, this episode is being sponsored by Recovery. If you've experienced a home fire, tornado, or other natural disaster, you know how easy it is to lose everything you own overnight. Well, Recover It is a new app. It allows you to record everything in your home, store it in the cloud for easy retrieval should disaster strike versus you trying to remember all of your household valuables, jewelry, heirlooms, etc. So you can claim, you can file and settle your claim with your insurance companies a lot faster. Check out the Recover It app today. Use the promo code on screen and you get 50% off today only. And as always, we like to remind our viewers, follow us here on LinkedIn, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and you can catch this episode with David talking about the wonderful Grand Hotel on Spotify and Apple Podcasts as well. And as always, we appreciate all of your thoughts and feedback. So David, you're coming up on a new season. There's a lot of buzz going. What's new? What's what's the new thing happening on the island this year? Anything you want to talk about? There's always something new that you guys are bringing for the for the upcoming guests. What's new this year? Well, that's amazing that you say that because that is what Grand Hotel is known for. Is something new every year, something different every year. Um, a few years ago, we re-engaged our relationship with Dorothy Draper and Company. Carlson Varner, Varney was the designer of this hotel, came in about 1978-79, and really um, put his his stamp on a Grand Hotel. Uh, to go back to your previous question, what's other thing Grand Hotel is known for? We have 388 rooms, and each of them are individually decorated. They're like fingerprints, no two the same. Um we have people that come every year and want a different room every year because they are sell they they put the key in the door and they open it. And we have real keys still. We don't have fobs. And they put the key in the door, open the door, and it's it's a new experience. It could be lilac, it could be yellow, it could be daisies, it could be it's it's absolutely stunning. This year we have the new cupola bar. Um, it's not new, but it's it's uh, renovated by Dorothy Draper and Company. The Woodfill Suite, which is uh, after one of our visionary owners that bought the hotel in 1933. We have a new uh, renovated suite for him. Um, and then there's some incredible packages this year um, all around Grand Hotel. Every weekend, different experiences. This past weekend was Murder Mystery Weekend. Um, coming up this weekend, the Titanic Weekend. We have something for everybody, Wine Weekends. We have a Superhero Weekend. Mostly, so Ted, it's mostly geared for kids. So you can't, I guess you could, I guess if you wanted to come and be a, so you can be a licensed superhero. So all the superheroes and princesses are here and they meet with the, the kids um, and you spend three days with them. They they go on classes and, and how to, how to you know, uh, do superhero stuff. Um, they go through makeup and, and, and hair done by the princesses. They have an evening uh, dinner um, with the superheroes and princesses. And at the end of it, they graduate from their um, academy, and they are uh, then a licensed and certified superhero or princess of their choice, which is awesome. And it, it to me, I, I wish I could just jump jump in and, and, and do it, um, but I, but I can't. I'm, I'm young at heart, but <laughs> a little out of place. And then we have at the end of the season, we're going into our third. This will be our third one. It's called Cork and Fork. Uh, we put it together two year, or two three years ago. This will be our third year, and it is an, a a celebration of females, women in culinary. So similar to the conversation we had before we got on, on board about women's basketball today and how incredible we we're talking about women's basketball. And it's great. Well, 30 something years ago, when I walked through my first kitchen, um, when I was working at the Western Crown Center and anywhere, re even really for 10 or 15 years of my career, you didn't see a lot of women in the kitchen. And if you did, they weren't in charge. Um, and that's changed today. We have some incredible female talent in the culinary world. And so what we do every year is we we reach out to six incredibly talented female chefs from around the United States. We bring them to Mackinac Island at Grand Hotel. We have a, a weekend celebrating them individually and collectively. But they are paired with 
our master sommelier, Elizabeth Schweitzer, who is the eighth woman in the world to ever reach, reach the level of master som. And she works with them to create a, a, a full eight course meal uh, paired with wines from female led wineries. And it's, it's a weekend of, of incredible celebration. Men and women are uh, alike are, are welcome to the event. It's usually sold out uh, in minutes when we post it. We have, you know, families come together, moms and daughters come together for the event. Um, this year, it's going to be uh, our theme is a little unique because um, what we found in the first two is about that these female chefs learned a lot from their moms and their grandmothers. So we we're asking each of them if they would like to bring their mom or their grandmother to the event with them. So it's going to be fantastic. Uh, look for it at grandhotel.com, uh, Cork and Fork. It's an incredible event in the fall. Man, that is so awesome. That is so awesome. You know, I was I was thinking back to our time because I think two years ago, three years ago, you know, our team got to help participate in some of the activities that you guys were working on. The surprises, right? The the outdoor activity center, the uh, mini golf, the shuffleboard, the outdoor chess. Our team, Angie and Lou, got to work with Kevin and Davidson and, and Nicholas with KSL. And those guys worked diligently to put together some real nice uh projects that were more entertainment for the guests coming into the new season. How are those how are those things going? The pizza company, I think the the jockey club and the woods, how how did all of that turn out? Is it well received? It's, it's awesome and people love it. You know, there's there's a lot more for the younger um kids to come in. We we redid the pool a few years ago, which is awesome. You know, now with the miniature golf that everybody can play golf, the Jewel is the name of our real golf course. The Gem is the name of our miniature golf course. Kind of a little play on that. Um, we also own another building, another hotel on the island called Bicycle Street Inn. And this year we're opening up an arcade um, at Bicycle Street Inn. So a little plug there. Not a grand hotel, but we'll have a new arcade on the island. So, you know, what we see is people that come to Grand Hotel and Macro Island are generational. So... You know, the, the mom and dad used to come with their parents and now they're bringing their kids and hopefully their kids are going to bring their kids. And so this is something that gets into people's lives. And so as as I have found in my life in, in uh, hospitality and especially in resorts is, you know, you, you got the parents kind of hooked, right? They got hooked when they came when they were 8, 10, 12 years old. But you got to get that. You got to get the kid because. Children make de- they they make a lot of decisions about where where we're going for vacation, and so if we can entertain them and find things for them to do and find things that they love, and they can go run and play on the island, um, they're going to tell mom and dad we want to go back to Mackinac Island Grand Hotel. You know what? You are so right about that. Children do make the decisions on where you're going to go for vacation. They do. <laughs> you don't want to bring a kid screaming and crying and screaming somewhere. You, you know, <laughs> makes for a long vacation. So. Oh, man, that is so awesome. Hey, are there any other special events, the Grand or Mackinac Island, that you would like to highlight for this upcoming season that, that folks must see or must experience and come visit? Well, I, I think so. We, we've changed up Labor Day uh, a little bit. So Labor Day used to be our jazz festival weekend. Um, we found it a little bit difficult to get really headline acts because Detroit does a jazz weekend at the same time. Well, they have really um, expanded their lineups and, 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 and what they're doing in Detroit. And if you're a jazz jazz fan and you want to go to a jazz weekend, I, I recommend going to jazz weekend in Detroit. If you want to come to us and, and, and really have and, and see some really great jazz artists to a lesser degree of jazz, we're in a great spot. We've changed it up a little bit this year. We have an incredible Labor Day weekend package that you can buy up into to go see concerts. What we found is again, going back to children and going back to, to people coming back, is that you would buy the package which included all the concerts. And so the package price was increased because you had a, you had all the concerts that, you know to pay for. And so we found some people didn't want to go to every one of the concerts. And so they wanted to go out to dinner one night or, or they didn't like who the artist was or the kids didn't want to go. Okay, So we said this time now it's a little different. So you can buy the concerts as a package add-on or a la carte. And so this year we're we're, we're expanding a little bit from jazz. We're a little bit into blues. And the fabulous Thunderbirds are our headline act. Um, so it's it's going to be a great event. Multiple venues this year. We're going to expand it to 
the Jockey Club and the Gatehouse, two of our other offsite venues. We're going to have a dueling piano event um, over that weekend that people can come to free of charge. Um, so looking for families to really end summer um, with a bang on Mackinac and in Grand Hotel um, and, and give them something to, to do, whether they want to go to jazz or not. It's really for everybody to come to the island and have fun. It's a, We are America's summer place, and that is really the wrap up of summer as we all did. You, you and I, you know, we remember Memorial Day was the beginning of the summer and Labor Day was the end of summer. And so come celebrate those two weekends with us. Man, that is so awesome and cool. Hey, hey, David, thanks so much for giving us some time today. It's been a pleasure, a real pleasure talking to you. And I, I still have that picture of the grand in my mind. And the only difference was we were trying to get over there to do our work in the brunt of winter. So it was kind of like tough getting across the lake, but it turned out beautiful. And it sounds like, man, it, it, it's really going, uh, it's going great up there. It's fantastic. Come back in the summer. It's a little <laughs> bit easier, less layers, um, but it's, it, it's a, an incredible destination. If you haven't seen it, grandhotel.com. Um, take a look at grand favorites. It gives you all the great opportunities. The things that are handpicked by us is great opportunities for people to come visit. Awesome. Thanks again. Hey, we'd like to remind our viewers, follow us here on LinkedIn, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and you can catch this episode with David talking about the famous Grand Hotel on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. And as always, we appreciate your thoughts and feedback, and we look forward to seeing you guys again. And remember, check out the Recover It app. Today, there's a 50% coupon, so you can get the easy promo price, and you'll definitely uh, be glad you did it. Thanks again for joining us. This is Ted with Ted's Hospitality Minute. We will see you guys again next time. Have a great week. Ted's guys. Hospitality Minute is sponsored by Recover It. Don't wait for disaster to happen to wish you had done this.